Okay, so in costing and taxation for class 12, we were continuing the chapter cost of materials and uh, we had already discussed a few, uh, basically two methods in the in valuing the cost of materials, the two methods which were simple average and I'm sorry, which were, which were the FIFO method and the LIFO method. In today's class, we'll be starting a new method which is simple average method and I haven't yet received the previous homeworks from many of you, only a few of you have sent it. So please send it to me as soon as possible. Okay, so in simple average method, what happens, it, this is also a, an important method uh, for your exam. Uh, in this chapter we cannot say what is important and what is not important because there are four methods and in your exam any of the methods can come so it's highly unpredictable it's very hard to predict that which uh, method uh, sums on which method will come in the exam anyways uh, the simple average method what does it say in this method simple average price is ascertained by adding the price rates of all lots held on the date of the issue and dividing by the uh, and dividing the sum by the number of such lots okay so this is uh, this is not a thing to be explained in uh, theoretically so I'll, I'll try to explain it to you with the help of an example so take this example thousand thousand units purchased at 10 2000 units purchased purchased at 20 and 3000 units purchased at rupees 30 on the next date what happened the company it decided to issue sell 2000 goods 2000 units to be sold now in this chapter we know that over the only thing we do is calculate the issue price so in in under this method the issue price will be calculated like this we'll what what do we do we'll add all the rates we'll add all the rates of the goods please mind that this is the only method to calculate the rate under simple average method uh, 10 plus 11 plus 12 that is all the rates and sorry this will be 3 divided by 3 now why 3 because there are rates of three types of goods over here this is the first lot this is the second lot this is the third lot how do we calculate the rate we add up all the rates and divide it by the number of lots suppose there was only two lots suppose this lot was not there then how would we calculate the rate then it would be 10 plus 11 divided by 2 right 10 plus 11 divided by 2 and 10 plus 11 divided by 2 equals i think 10.5 so 10.5 would be our issue rate so this is how we calculate rate under the simple average method it's very simple it's easier than fifo and lifo method what do we do we just add the rates and then divide them by the number of lots 10 plus 11 divided by 2 10 plus 11 plus 12 then divided by 3 okay now let's solve a short illustration the following are the details supplied by jk simmons uh, let's start it December 1 opening stock rupees uh, 2000 units at rupees 5 then purchased 1000 units at 6 issued 2500 purchased 2000 units again at 6.5 and issued 2200 and on 31st 12 2018 a shortage of 100 units was found so let's start the sums first of all we'll do what we'll record the opening stock right so opening stock was December 1 December 1 what was the opening stock the opening stock was 2000 units at what rate at the rate of rupees 5 means 10,000 right okay now the next entry comes on the date 7th of December December 7 what happens on this date purchases are made how much 1000 units at the rate of rupees 6 means 6000 right so we'll record the balance now now under this method one thing is uh, very good that you don't have to write all the goods all the all the types of units or lots in means separately in like previously we used to write 2000 and 1000 but in this method we'll directly write 3000 right and now 3000 now at what rate 
3000 right at what rate now in the previous method where we used to do the sums we used to write like this 2000 2000 at the rate of 5 and 1000 at the rate of 6 right this is how we used to write but in simple average method we we will not write like this we will write 3000 over here and the rate column will be blank yes the rate column will be blank we will write nothing on the rate column and we will simply write the amount what is the amount 10,000 plus 6,000 16,000 simply okay the third date on our sums is 10 December on 10 December what happened on 10 December issues were made December 10 issues were made how many units 2500 units 2500 units now the question arises what will be the rate of the issue so the rate of the issue will be issue rate on December 10 right so the issue rate on December 10 shall be 5 plus 6 divided by 2 divided by 2 which gives me which is equal to 5.5 .5. so 5 plus 6 11 11 divided by 2 5.5 .5. so this will be my rate of issue it's as simple as this nothing difficult how did we calculate the rate we just calculated the rate by dividing by adding both the rates and divided it, dividing it by 2 so 5.5 .5 will be the rate the amount comes equals to 13750 now we had 3000 units we already issued 2500 so the left number of units is 500 500 at what rate at no rate we won't write the rate correct now uh, for to write the amount how will you write the amount 16000 minus 13750 simply we'll write the amount like this only in every step we'll write the amount yes for example in the first step uh, for 16000 we wrote 10 plus 10,000 plus 6,000 and here to write the amount we will simply deduct 13750 from 16,000 so it comes equal to 2250 now the next date is December 15 right December on December 15 2000 units were being purchased at what rate at 6.5 which equals to 13,000 so again balance 2500 rate nothing and amount 13,000 plus 2250 is equal to 15250. Okay, I hope there's no confusion till now. Now comes the last date, December 31. On December 31, an issue was made, an issue was made of 2200 units. Now, this might be a little bit confusing for you guys. Okay, now in order to calculate the rate of the second issue, what do we do? Now I already told you that we uh, add all the rates and uh, then divide them by the number of lots. And now we have, if if we see, then now we have three types of goods, three types of lots. One which one of which the rate is five, then six, and then six point five. So shall we? Uh, add all the three rates and uh, then calculate the rate of the goods issued in, on December 31 no why because if you see over here we had 2000 units correct then we purchased 1000 units then we sold 2500 units now this 2500 units is first is first sold from the first lot okay since since 2500 units was sold from the first lot the first lot which has 2000 units 
the first lot which has 2000 units it means that it means that the units from the first lot was sold out completely right so the units uh, units from the first lot was completely sold out so we don't have any of those units left means we will not take the rate of this unit we will take the rate of this unit and this unit means the rate of the second issue is issue rate on december 31 is equal to 6 plus 6.5 divided by 2 which gives me uh, which gives me how much it gives me 6.25 so means 2200 units means this this 2200 units if it was sold at the rate of 6.25 okay which gives me equal to again 13750 understood now let me revise things for you again i had 2000 units at 5 rupees then i purchased 1000 units at 6 rupees now i have 3000 units at what rate we don't write the rate because the only thing, the only time I use the rate is at the time of the issue and at the time and each issue will have a different rate. Each issue will have a different rate. So there's no need to write the rate in the, in the balance, under the balance column. Okay. So the first rate was 5.5. How? Because then we had two types of goods, this one and this one. So 5 plus 6 divided by 2 is equal to 5.5. Now at the time of second issue, when we were issuing 2200 goods, then the thing to be noted is that the first type of goods was already sold out because in the on december 10 we sold 2500 goods now this for this 2500 goods first 2000 was sold out from here and then the rest 500 was sold out from here correct i'm sorry first 2000 was sold out from here and the rest 500 was sold out from here therefore it means that this 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 lot was totally sold out there's no units left from this lot if there is no unit left from this stock then how will we take the rate of this unit correct so then we'll take the rate of other slots which have units left in them so we took the units of these two lots and then we calculated the rate and issue so now we have 300 units at what rate at no rate and balance i have left of 1500 now on december 31 another miss happening happened a shortage took place now let's treat this shortage as abnormal loss it makes things easier for us okay shortage of how much shortage of 100 units now the shortage of 100 units mean if we are treating it as abnormal loss we, so we have to apply some rate so what will be the rate the rate will be of the latest goods means 6.5 how 6.5 again we had 2500 goods correct we had 2500 goods out of which 2000 was purchased uh, 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 sorry out of which we had 500,000 uh, goods uh, at 6 rupees and 2000 at 6.5. So this unit is completely sold out on this date. This this lot which uh, of which the rate was 6 rupees was completely sold out on December 31st. So the only lot which we have left is this lot. Therefore, we have to value abnormal loss at 650 and balance is 200 the nothing in the rate column and the amount will be 850 so this was a short illustration this was, yes this was a short illustration on simple average method for homework just do this sums please only this sums nothing else and uh, if you have any query then email me at this email address 
so that's it for today thank you